Remember, we've got to try to sell all our pizza and it goes half price at midnight. This is our kitchen, if you can call it that. It's uh, our non-kitchen, if you will. So it's kind of just a whole bunch of uh, Bush League things put together. Things that have been donated that we patched together and made a snack bar. We've got um, just a six foot folding table in the middle and, and some really cheap Malamine cabinets that are about this wide so you can't actually fit anything inside of them so we end up putting all our big stuff on top. And uh, this is where we feed all of our kids out of this kitchen right here and again as many as uh, 60 to 80 on a uh, Tuesday and about 20 to 30 on a Wednesday night and, and as many as hundreds on the weekends, uh, 150 for our Christmas banquet. So uh, not ideal to have a kitchen uh, in this way. Uh, no running water, we do all our dishes out of a kettle with uh, you know pouring the water into Rubbermaid containers, so uh, not ideal. The Aviva Community Fund, uh, their idea was to get community groups and individuals to think of ways to make a difference in their community. And so we put together a project and we submitted it to their website and uh, the entire contest was an online uh, voting contest. So our project we called Joe's Place Hungry for Hope. Once we hit the finals, it was all up to the judges, and so it was up to our uh, writing of the proposal. And they looked at how realistic it was for us to accomplish this. And luckily, we had had a whole bunch of um, uh, kitchen equipment that had been donated from generous people, which was just a miracle and incredible. And so that made it much more realistic that we could uh, accomplish this. And uh, for years now, we've been feeding youth, but more and more as our programs grow, food becomes a more and more important part of all of those programs. We feed kids because some of them need the food and that will be their only meal. Others come because they're maybe not eating as healthy and others come because they want to be part of something bigger than themselves and they actually call this their family. So we try not to distinguish between kids that are low income, middle income, high income. Uh, we invite all kids to come the last thing kids need to feel is labeled yet again in their lives because that has been uh, something that's happened to them so many times. How's it uh, going? Has it been a calm night? Any problems so far? Or, uh... Uh, no problems. Very no problem. calm. No drunks uh, coming to the door? Actually nothing tonight. All right. I don't even have to turn anyone away. That's what I like to hear. It's a little different. Kids, kids know we're tight on security, then they come sober. That's yeah. good. Well done. Okay, one-way door in what, an hour? Yeah. All right. Yeah, hour 15. Keep your eyes open. Okay. We actually have seven paid staff uh, on now and uh, about 100 volunteers that help in various capacities. So we, uh, we train our volunteers. They all go through uh, an orientation training and then on-the-job training and uh, they're trained to do so many different tasks. It's hard this dude just breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Right here as well. Yep. Go ahead. Rookie, welcome. They smell breath and make sure kids haven't been drinking. Uh, they check ID to make sure they're the right age to be coming in. We have uh, staff and volunteers that uh, run the snack bar and they do a phenomenal job and they also offer a lot of their giftings. We use the volunteers' gifts to help them to connect with the kids. If a volunteer comes in and they play guitar, uh, it's amazing how quickly they'll find a youth that's interested in guitar lessons and will facilitate that. My name is Adrian. I would say the biggest need that we have is for full-time staffing. We have a phenomenal group of volunteers, but there's just something about someone who can commit their entire week to the programs and the planning and uh, thinking through projects that need to be done. Just, just the pull sites are hard. Kids really need a place to belong and Joe's Place has become a family not only for the kids but for the staff, like the volunteers especially. We all kind of learn, lean on each other and learn from each other and I think for the kids too, they have a place to belong and a place to um, interact with their friends and it's safe here. They, can, they feel like they belong. Coming here is just better because you can have fun without drinking or drugs. And it's just like the funnest place ever to be and the safest place. Because if Joe's Place wasn't here, people would be doing drugs or drinking. 
And with a place like this, people can come here and just hang and make new friends. It definitely helps kids, you know, not get into trouble late at night. You know, they can come and hang with their friends in a controlled environment. Joe's Place is just something for them to do on the weekends that's, you know, it's, it's not going out and drinking and partying and causing trouble and, and all that kind of stuff, you know. So that's one of the reasons we're open, the hours that we are, and we do the things that we do. Hey, everyone, welcome to Joe's Place. We're glad you came out tonight. We are so glad there was a concert tonight because our boiler is broken down and all you guys are creating heat. So uh, welcome to our boiler room and this is a 1,400,000 BTU boiler made in 1957 so it's not that uh, efficient really. And uh, every year, about two or three times a year, for a week or two, it'll go down and uh, you know, uh, typing with mittens on, it's a real good character builder but I guess I'm enough of a character already so uh, we're hoping to fix this thing permanently. Uh, the motor keeps blowing on it and then it won't blow any air through it so uh, if any of you out there know someone who knows a lot about boiler motors, give us a call. <laughs> 693 Joes. That's 693 Joes. <laughs> we are a very big youth center, especially our building and our programs. Uh, funding is always a problem as a nonprofit registered charity. We have some just incredible supporters, uh, individuals who believe in us uh, primarily. And so we send out newsletters, about uh, 5,000 newsletters a year to uh, different uh, churches and individuals and service clubs and, and we uh, let people know about our needs on our website and we have so many people who support us uh, again we would we would shut down without the church's support they've been so supportive we also have again service clubs uh, some grants and some foundations although we're working those more now that we've gotten a little bit more publicity recently we're really trying to uh, push for some more funding in those areas we try to do everything we can to fundraise. Uh, again, we get the word out there about our programs. Uh, we have the kitchen where we're trying to raise some funds. We also have a store on the front of our building uh, that was uh, sponsored by one of our donors. And so we sell electronics and, uh, and home theater equipment. We have some incredible home theater equipment that we have for sale. And some donated, some that we've actually started purchasing to, for resale. Uh, we also have had some generous people donate some incredible things. We had a pastor in town who uh, moved away and he left us a brand new collection of Brazilian soccer gear worth about $20,000 that we're selling right out of the front of our building. And so if you have soccer uh, needs, this is the place to come because they're incredible deals. I want to tell you guys a few quick things. Has anyone ever heard of International Justice Mission? What about invisible children? These are a couple of groups that are helping to make things in this world that are wrong. They're helping to make those things right. We're going to be raising money to actually free a slave. Do you realize there's actually people that are still in slavery in this world? A lot of youth just don't have any uh, adult influence in their lives that is helping them to succeed. And so we try to uh, mentor the youth and build uh, deep and meaningful relationships with them to help them succeed in life. Every time somebody walks through the door, they are just dumbfounded and, uh, and their jaw drops and they say, we had no idea this was in the city of Moose Jaw. Uh, we've got a lot going on in here.